Right in the middle of the Lüneburg Heath, big engines are droning. Where have we landed here? At a truck racing event, perhaps? Not that, but test driver Ole Janssen is really pushing the lorry at a pace. This is not the speed vehicles here at the so-called handling track would normally be going. But because we're joining him, Ola is accelerating somewhat. Well, what we're doing here now is showing off a bit. You see, when we're testing, we do it as close to real conditions as possible. That is, we test with lorry and trailer. And obviously also borderline situations with maneuvers like changing lanes to simulate emergencies. But the tyres, of course, should also have their characteristics in borderline situations. Whilst the large oval track is used to test particularly long-term wear, the handling track is used to test road performance and ride quality in tight corners. On both tracks, one needs experience and concentration to be able to quickly recognize eventual problems. With the critical tire-vehicle combination, critical situations can always arise, but we always adapt to this and we know about it in advance. So that's why we start to drive well below borderlines, which is obvious. Of course, there are still always surprises, but we're trained accordingly to be able to react to them properly. A tyre must first have run a thousand kilometres on the test track before it's allowed onto normal roads. Although nowadays almost every type of strain can be computer simulated, it goes without saying that track testing plays an important part in the development of a tyre. Would you mind taking over? The engineers are interested, for example, in temperature distribution in tyres. Naturally, we don't have such detailed data from the tyre hub, but in the shoulder area we reach temperatures of 54, 55 degrees, 53 degrees, and we first walk around and give them a bang. Andreas Fleck uses the infrared camera on all the tyres of the vehicle. Depending on the type of tyre, the material used and the tyre pressure, astonishing differences arise in heat buildup. Not only sideways do interesting details appear, but also on the tyre tread. What one can see clearly here are, for example, the relatively warm areas between the tread grooves and the meanwhile relatively cooled down areas on the outside. Strangely enough, those areas which undergo no friction with the road surface are warmer than the actual tread. How come? Because tyre temperatures to a large extent build up beneath the actual profile in the lower section of the tread. And also because naturally the tread blocks on the surface of the profile can cool down faster because of the airflow, for example, or through contact with the road surface, so there's more feedback from there. Right at the lorry's driving start, the temperature differences were far greater. Now after the tyres have been at a standstill a few minutes, the difference becomes correspondingly smaller. All these are tests on stationary objects. Far greater interest is shown by test personnel where gained from moving objects. That's why the test track has very recently been equipped with the E-Laboratory. The drivers must try to reach as close as possible a certain position from which an infrared camera can take a footprint of the tyres from below. This is a lorry tyre of normal pressure with the desired final shape. Important are the high tyre pressure that is relatively evenly distributed in the middle and on the outside the transition to a lower tyre pressure. We're interested in how this would be with the wrong tyre pressure. That's why after the normal lorry tyre we're sending one with too little tyre pressure over the E-Lab. The difference in the tyre is hardly noticeable, but the test result looks quite different. What one now sees here is, on the one hand, the larger footprint area. In comparison, I'd now guess a good 10% larger footprint area. One sees in the shoulder area that the footprint has become longer, even longer on this side than on the other. And this leads to clearly more deformation energy being transformed into warmth. And this energy doesn't come from nowhere. That is the fuel consumption. 
a picture gained with complicated technology emphasizes by chance in this way also a simple theory. Wrong tire pressure soon becomes expensive because the material wears faster and fuel consumption rises markedly.